Hello, this is Max Drake. I'd like to talk about um, this free tool called Dev Toys. I was suddenly thinking, what productivity tools do developers have to, to use? And I came across this one. And it, you can download it from the uh, Microsoft Store or you can actually just get it from uh, uh, GitHub as well. And it's an offline uh, Windows app that helps developers with a lot of tales. So if we just go and have a look at it down here, uh, it's got a whole lot of different uh, other little odd things that you can do, not odd things, but odd little features that you can actually use. So there's a kind of JSON to YAML, there's a timestamp, there's these ones, there's encoders, decoders, which I'm not using, formatters, which I am using. So what I'm doing at the moment is I'm doing a bit of stuff with some API. So I'm getting stuff through um, an, an API call to a database somewhere in the world. And it, it's giving me, an, and when it comes down, it comes down in a JSON format. So I need to just check the JSON format to see what's actually coming in. Now, this is some weather data coming through. So it's got all this structure through here. Maybe from this, when I'm actually getting the call, I might only want the temperature and I might want the amount of rainfall. So there's an awful lot of data that I've got through there. So I'd load that JSON information into a uh, Python script, uh, a data frame, and then I'd process it some way, I normally convert it into a CSV format, I'd look at the data and then see what I want to strip out. Then I'd actually go through, strip out the data so I only got the information that I needed. And then I'd take that data and I'd go and put it up onto uh, 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 an SQL database. Um, and, and so I'd then, so I'd get information from JSON, I would then convert it to CSV, I would then upload the CSV into the database, in, in, into an SQL database. And, at the fi and then the final thing is that I would then consume that through something like um, uh, uh, Google Data Studio, I think it's called Looker Studio now, where you can then visualize that data from the database um, on a regular basis, so if there's any changes that happen. And the whole process is automated, so it just has some, some triggers running through. So I'm suddenly working with um, uh, information in three ways. So I suddenly think, oh, these are some seriously cool, handy little tools that I can do. Now, again, the nice thing with this one is structured it down there and you can have it in, in different spaces and things for viewing. Um, but again, what it doesn't do is if you actually make it uh, corrupt the JSON file, you can't see it. Now, there is an XML validator at the moment, but there isn't a JSON validator. So I'd like to see a JSON validator um, so that um, because that I would use more often now in some ways I don't tend to use a JSON validator what uh, I would first check what I actually use is I use a JSON converter so if I paste this into here it converts the JSON to the CSV now what this allows me to do is that I can get the picture of the columns that I do want and the headers that I want then I can see about stripping it down now when I get it into the CSV format I've got another tool through here now in the um, dev app through here there's one where you can look at sql now but generally i'm using json sql i don't use xml um, that much but I, I, I suppose there's going to be times when i will be using it and i think it's becoming a lot more common uh, i just have generally just use uh, json really but the sql input and things like that now another thing that i, I actually use is um, i would get once i'm sort of setting up my database uh, I actually take some CSV data and there's another little uh, online tool that I use called CSV to SQL. So you can actually paste your um, CSV data into here and here's this is date time so in fact I want uh, a, a data type of date time and these other ones are all numeric. Now you see on here they've all just got underscores. Now when you've got uh, table headers inside of uh, SQL databases and things like that, you really want a single word, like you can't put it in quotes, so wait, So you've got to use the underscore. So if you want two words, like the temp or something like that, then you're going to have the and then underscore, because you can't use camel case either, or upcase of my things, it all kind of merges into the same. So that's the only way to sort of differentiate things, but they want a continuous string of words through there. The other thing is you can either drop a table if you've got one already, if it exists, and then uh, it will create the table if it isn't. So when you can do that and you can actually put in here of your table name is the db dot and the table name is table. And, and so now I can actually go CSV. So it says it will create the table with these fields 
It can also, you can choose which is your primary key, and I'm using the date time as a primary key through here, and then it will actually insert all of these rows of data. Now, if I didn't want to actually build the table from scratch, but I just wanted to add some extra stuff to the thing, I would actually remove the create table and uh, we would just have the insert data. Now, from that point of view, I can come back into the dev tools and I can actually just check that as far as SQL goes. And it says, yes, I'm as happy as uh, uh, anything because it, it comes through. Whereas if I delete that first insert, um, it may not do it. I don't know. Um, if I copy and if I just delete that, uh, do it. A bit slow, I find, with, 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 because I've got the camera on here. Um, but anyway, it should be able to validate what that, that, that it's um, good SQL to go into there. A couple of other things that I find quite useful on here. So I'm just going to close that and fire it up again. Um, so, so that. Now, one of the things with APIs and one of the things that's driving me cracked at the moment, or did drive me cracked quite a lot, uh, was this whole concept of timestamps. Now, if we just go into that original um, JSON file through there, you'll see it's got sunrise through here. Now, when you're dealing with APIs and stuff like that, um, uh, uh, like the first ones I was working on was some sensors for a greenhouse. And the greenhouse was in New Zealand, but the people who were dealing with the sensors uh, were from Sweden. So what they were doing is they were taking the data uh, from the sensors and it was going into their cloud data place and they normalized the data so that it read um, uh, the data uh, in UTC time. So it converted it, or it just kind of said, no, we want it as UTC time. So um, if we then want the real time, we'll convert it back to New Zealand time. So New Zealand time is plus 12 hours standard time. So UTC is the Greenwich Mean Time, which is in London. So it converted it into the London time of what that was. So it shifted it forward or back um, 13 hours so that it was the same. So it normalized the data through there. And then he said, well, that same time in New Zealand is 13 hours ahead or 12 hours ahead um, or, or 13 hours ahead uh, when we're on uh, uh, daylight saving time and maybe 11 hours when they're on da daylight saving. So that could vary a number. Now, the other thing is you've got uh, six fields to actually give a date time. You've got the year, the month, the day, the hour, the minute, and the second. And so anything of one of those changes, you might have to increment through all of the other ones to do some changes, or you've got to modify six fields to actually get that one string of the data that you want. Or else you can use a timestamp. Now on this timestamp now, if I just go now, you'll see it actually comes through to here. So the timestamp is the number of seconds from the 1st of January 1970 going forward. So if I just paste that other one that I had in there, and then if I just go enter, you'll see that is from the month of February on the day of the 26th, and it's 6.58 in the morning and 21 seconds. If I hit now, this is the number through here. So a lot of times I'm actually looking at Unix or, or Epoch time or whatever, and the difference between the two, and I'm actually having to do a check, um, especially when I'm trying to validate things. The first time I completely forgot about the fact that they'd changed it to UTC. So suddenly I was getting sunshine in the middle of the night, <laughs> wondering why my plants were growing, because they shouldn't have. <laughs> so um, I find this is a really handy thing to, to use and to have and to make it accessible, and then to see the fact that it's picking up these things like daylight saving and things like that. So that is a game changer all on its own for me. So I'd have this just because it's a handy thing to do. The formatters, again, my the formatters that I've got, I think, are working through and the validators going through there. Another thing which I quite like about this is it's got Laura Mipsum. So you can actually say um, uh, 10 and then you can say words and it'll give you 10 words. Or you can say 10 sentences, gives you 10 sentences. Or you can actually say 10 paragraphs and it gives you 10 paragraphs. So if we just take um, a couple of lines of that first one through there, uh, we, we take that and we'll look at the, the thing. So you, you can use something like a check sum on a file. So you can upload a file and then you can uh, get uh, upload the file again to see that it actually has the same number 
uh, because if, if the numbers change, that means somebody's gone in there and modified it. So you can see whether it's a safe file or not. So that's a handy thing to have. There's a few things to do with hashes and the different encoding types. Um, I'm not really bothering about them. I'm not using them. Well. This one I've been using with the uh, Lorem Ipsum. Now, if we've got the Lorem Ipsum coming through here, um, where I see this particularly useful for me, I sometimes have to do a bit of changing of cases and I go online and find a tool that will do this. So it can go from sentence case to uh, lower case to upper case to title case to camel case, uh, constant case, kebab case, you know, all these other ones, alternating things. But if we just go back to the original text and then just go lower case, we can do snake case. Now the snake case is brilliant for um, uh, SQL. So if I've got a CSV with a whole lot of extra characters into the thing, I can bring them and clean the characters out and then just make it into uh, a snake case so that all my headers inside the database uh, are going to be great. Um, so I, I, I suddenly thought that's a useful tool. I hadn't had it before. The regex tester through here, I haven't tested this regex tester. I've got another uh, regex one um, and, uh, that I use. Um, and basically you paste what your information in here and then you say what am I trying to target I want to target that word text wherever it is and I want to replace it with something so that's a simple quick uh, find and replace but if it's in a certain if you've got a whole stream of data and uh, like here uh, and you're trying to push it into the database or something like that and you want to remove these particular brackets or you want to change that fields a, a few odd things like the, the way this structure you want to move that bracket across to another location that's where something like regex can actually work quite well um, so it's sort of when you've got a whole lot of mishmash of data something like a quick search and replace doesn't work with a, a, a text um, thing and, and VS code and, and you need to go on to using uh, regex now generally I've just done the find and replace and, and, and ended up doing a whole lot of bodging to try and do things but I, I've used regex a couple of times and I found it to be a really good tool um, but I'm not that familiar with it. But the fact that um, uh, if people do use regex on a regular basis, um, that is a handy tool to actually have in the, the, there as well. Um, they're, they've got a markdown preview, but um, the new Power Toys actually has uh, allows you to do markdown preview inside of uh, File Explorer in the review uh, preview pane. So I don't need to do that. A uh, couple of things that, again in in the uh, graphics, and one that's quite useful. It's got kind of a pain, and I I quite like these ones. There's a couple of image converters and. Uh, uh, so that you're changing it from a bitmap to a, a PNG or something like that. And I'm always a little bit uncomfortable about going online and using online tools for that. Because some of the, they've got that information in there as well. Whereas all of these are offline. So there is a sense of security about this. Now, one of the ones that I'd be using a bit may be a, a PNG or JPM a compressor. Is suddenly my website, I'd actually taken a whole lot of pictures on my camera and they're big file sizes and I actually want to reduce them down so that they're kind of, they're not sucking up too much in my database uh, for my website and they're not slow to open either so I find the compressor thing can, it, it's a useful thing, thing to have this one here I thought was a bit quirky but I quite like it I haven't I've sort of read about um, uh, uh, accessibility on websites and things like that but you, you know my daughter's dyslexic so I'm sort of aware of that sort of thing but the eyesight one I thought this is good because it's a visual representation of what other people see on that. So I think it might influence me uh, that I'd actually do a screenshot of certain websites just to see how other people perceive some of them because I suddenly have a few favourite colours that I want to play with and maybe those colours are not that good. On these ones here they stand out but on those ones the yellow actually converts into to a red but the red um, you, you know just disappears into greys on these ones so I, it might it, it, it's something I was never aware of so it's a, a, a little toy at this point in time but I still find it an interesting thing to look at so I think this is a, a work uh, it, 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 it's going to develop over time and there'll be extra tools at, at this point in time if I had this, I'd most probably have done my regex file though. So I'll give links to these other ones and also to the, the dev tools. But it's a handy little tool. It's, it's, it's those little obscure things that you just want to do something a little bit odd. And 
uh, you, you know, like developers doing them all the time with the programming stuff. And it's a nice thing to have. Now, because it's just on, on your uh, thing, it, it, it's not like power, uh, power Toys, which sits in the tray that's always active in the background. Uh, this one you only fire up when you want. So I've actually just got it as a, 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 a pinned onto my taskbar. Uh, so um, it is a free tool. I think it's going to develop over time. I'll give a link to the other ones. As I said, it's just that I, I think I was just very conscious of it because of the process stuff that I've been doing recently. And I think there's some other things in there uh, that I'm going to start. And, and I was doing something with, I had a string which actually had um, forward slashes and things. And I had, it, it, it was, I think, a bit of JSON or something that I was sending out as an API call. And then I had to do this test is escape and unescape that you had to have the right number of slashes and things so I think that might have been quite useful so there's a few of these ones here I'm not that familiar with but for my process that I'm doing at the moment this is really good um, uh, a handy thing to do and also actually the another thing with that JSON formatter that I thought was quite good is that you have the JSON into one format and then you can actually minify it in the other side so that's quite good um, for if I actually want to put it into a string for an API call in a bit of coding is that I can actually just it's never going to be that long but I can actually just convert it into a different uh, look as to how I want it to be so um, I, I, there's tools there I'll definitely be using a lot more and as a free thing that that's uh, that I think it'll be continually developed is definitely a handy one to have so my recommendations are thumbs up. If you found the video useful, please give a thumbs up. Thank you very much.